Ahoy there, folks! I'm Captain Benzie, and welcome to another episode of the Cat Skull Academy, the series that aims to teach you everything you'll need to know about the various different systems and gameplay mechanics in Eve Echoes. In today's lesson, we're going to be talking about how to get started on the exploration career. This is where you can fly around space, high sec, low sec, and null sec, scan down various data and relic sites, hack them open to claim their rewards, which you would then sell on the market. Now, this can be quite a lucrative career choice for new pilots. It can be a fairly straightforward one as well, but it is fairly risk free in certain places and very high risk, high reward in other circumstances so it gives you a lot of versatility and it's an excellent option if you just like the concept of flying around space seeing what there is in the game without necessarily being involved in player versus player combat or indeed play uh, pve combat either now the purposes of this lesson are to help you understand the basics of scanning and hacking, to know what your target source radius and analyzer strength are and how you can achieve those using various modules, skills, ship hulls and rigs. From there, you should know which ship is going to be best for your purposes and have a basic understanding of how to fit it for exploration. Now, there are other videos in this series as well. I do have a video on wide resonance scanning and on hacking uh, uh, into Relic and data sites directly. So after you've watched this video, I do recommend that you check out both of those too. Now with all that said and done though, if you do enjoy this video, please let me know by hitting like on it, subscribe to the channel for all things Eve Echoes, ding that notification bell to never miss an upload, and if you do want to help support this channel and keep me doing what I'm doing, I have a Patreon page that you can pledge to support at, and a Redbubble merchandise store. Finally as well, if you do need help with anything in the game at all, please feel free to ask in the comment section down below, or to come join the Cat Skull Discord, there's a whole plethora of friendly folk there who are more than happy to try and help in any way, shape or form that they can. With all of that said and done then, let's talk about exploration. First of all, then, we need to understand the basics of exploration and hacking in general. Now, again, I have done videos on how analyzers work and how wide resonance scanners work, which will go into a bit more depth than the scope of this video. I do strongly recommend that you check out both of those videos after this one, and both are linked in the description of this video. Now, the concept of exploration and scanning is to basically move around space and scan down relic and data sites. These are special sites in space that contain containers or boxes that can be decoded using analyzers, and they contain sometimes some fairly lucrative loot. Everything from rig materials to industry decryptors, and there's a lot of really cool stuff that you can find in these containers, including the secret trafficking containers as well, which can be incredibly lucrative for people who are willing to spend real money buying the Aurum or Plex in order to buy the keys to open them. These often sell on the market for two to four million a pop, um, and then people can open them for some really hectic loot themselves. But let's talk about how this actually works. So there are three pieces of gear that you will always need in regards to scanning and exploration. Now the first is a wide resonance scanner, a wide range wave resonance simulator to use its full name. These are the blue scanners and you can find these on the market under mid slots and space exploration technology right towards the bottom. Now, what these do is essentially allow you to locate the various different relic and data sites in the game. Now, every single relic or data site in the game has what's referred to as a source radius. This is the sort of size to a scanner that this shows up as, and you will need a wide range wave resonance simulator with a minimum scan radius equal to or lower than the source radius of the system that you are targeting. This means that, for example, if you look at the wide range wave resonance simulator on screen now, you can see at the bottom this currently has a minimum scan radius of 73.31. That means if a particular relic or data site has a source radius of 73.31 or larger, I will be able to scan it, lock its position down, and then warp into it. So the first thing that you'll need to know is what minimum scan radius am I actually going to require? 
The second thing you'll need to know is what kind of analysis strength am I going to need? Because the second and third modules that you will need for exploration are the analyzers. Now these come in two flavors in inverted commas. You have the data analyzers and you have relic analyzers. Now data analyzers are used to hack into data sites. These are essentially like abandoned outposts um, and various different computer banks, etc., that you would hack into for various bits of data and information. On the other hand, a relic analyzer is used to basically excavate various debris or ruins or shipwrecks and things like that that are found in the depths of space. Now, both of these work in very much the same way. When you activate one of these, you lock onto the box that you want to decode, you activate one of these and it will cycle over and over again and attempt to decode. Now, the higher the meta level of the analyzer, you'll notice that these have an analysis success rate shown at the bottom. In the case of this Gravedigger Relic Analyzer, that is currently 29.6%. The higher this is, the better you're going to do because it's more chance to actually successfully open the various different containers in Relic and data sites. The second most important stat on these is the analysis strength. Now these actually come in a one to four of strength rating. So you get the lowest strength is one, the highest strength is four. The reason this one is currently showing as a five is because it's fitted to an Astero, which gets a bonus, but we'll talk more about that later. For now, just understand that boxes come in various different difficulty strengths, one through five, and ultimately you will need to have a relic analyzer of the equivalent strength to open it. Now that means that a Gravedigger relic analyzer that has a analysis strength of four or five on an Astero can open any box up to level four or five. If you have a data analyzer, for example, that only had a analysis strength of three, then you can open any difficulty one, difficulty two, or difficulty three level boxes. You would not be able to open a difficulty four level box if your analysis strength is only level three. Hopefully that makes sense. So how do you know what you need to actually achieve with these? Like which of these numbers do you actually need? Well, I'm going to put on screen now a particular chart that I have created for the Catskull Academy in the past. This I will have a link for it uh, in the description down below. You'll be able to find it on the Catskull Discord and it will be available with an Imgur link or however the heck you pronounce that. So you can open this and download it and see it in full size. Now, in essence, what we're looking at here are the different types of sites, and I've divided these into green for sites found in high sec, yellow for sites found in low sec, and red for sites found in null sec. Now, there is a slight overlap here in that some of the overlap, uh, some of the null sec ones do appear in low sec, and some of the low sec ones do appear in null sec and vice versa, but it gives you a basic understanding of what kind of areas you should be scanning in and what kind of numbers you need to reach. So if you look at the chart here, which is created by me reverse engineering every single site in the game, I basically undocked a ship, I created all these different sites, I would scan it down with a scanner of a particular um, minimum scan radius, then I would reduce that and keep going until eventually I could find the site, and you can work out what those boundaries are by doing that. Now if you look at this chart, you'll see that all of the high sec sites have a source radius of 230 meters or larger. This means that if you're only scanning high sec sites, you only need a source radius, sorry, a minimum scan radius of 230 meters. If you want to go into the low sec sites, you will need a minimum scan radius of a, as low as 120 in order to be able to get all of those sites. And if you look into null sec, you'll see that your minimum scan radius needs to be as low as 75 meters to get every single possible site in the game. So the Astero that you saw earlier with a minimum scan radius of 73.31 can find every single site in the game. It's nice and easy for me to scan every single site in the game, but you don't necessarily need to go all the way to source radius of 75 if you're not going to be going to null sec. If you're going to be staying to high sec and low sec, for example, you would only need to get your minimum scan radius down to 120. And we'll talk about how you can actually reduce that later on. It's worth noting that the main way to do this, however, is with a higher meta level wide resonance scanner. You'll notice that the, the higher the meta level of the wide resonance scanner, the lower its minimum scan radius will go. This can then also be affected by training particular skills, by using particular ship hulls, and 
by using rigs. But it's worth noting that the quality of the scanner will basically provide the base point for that. Now, what about your analyzers? Well, if you look at the second part of the chart on the right hand side here, where it says, for example, info shards, com towers, mainframes, databases, or debris, rubble, remains, and ruins, these are the difficulty levels of the boxes and how many of these are in each site. So if we look at the very top of the list, you'll see a local pirate virus test site. The word pirate there will be Guristus or Blood Raider, Angel, Sancha, or Serpentis, depending where you're scanning. A local virus test site will have two info shards, and that's basically it. If you were to look at a regional pirate data fortress, which is the first one you would find in Losec there, this has a source radius of 210, and it contains one info shard, one comm tower, and one mainframe. There are three boxes in that site, and if you want to open all of them, you will need an analysis strength of three. Now again, that analysis strength of three can either be applied by getting a particular module, for example the Worker Shovel Relic Analyzer, or whichever the equivalent the Meta Level 5 Data Analyzer is, these both have an analysis strength of three baked in. If you're flying an Astero or another ship that has a plus one analysis strength hull bonus, then you could use a type two, a uh, analysis strength two analyzer, and that hull bonus would push that up to the necessary three. If you look at the high sec sites, you will see the high security sites, uh, sites found in high sec systems, only have difficulty one and difficulty two boxes. So if you're going to be staying in high sec, you don't need an analysis strength higher than two. If you're going into low sec, however, those difficulty three boxes do appear, at which point an analysis strength of three is required, and the null sec sites then contain analysis strength four boxes. So you would need to have an analysis strength of four, either by getting the highest quality analyzers or by fitting a meta level five analyzer onto a ship that has the plus one analysis strength hull bonus, and we'll cover that more later on. So hopefully you should already be able to see, based on what kind of content you want to access, what kind of gear you will need. You do not need to go for some big expensive ship early on that has all of the bonuses. You don't need all of the relic analyzers and data analyzers maxed out to the top. You don't need the best scanners. You can start off fairly cheaply as long as you are limiting yourself to particular regions. I like to suggest that for new scanners, the best thing to do if you're not sure if this is something you'll enjoy, then just stick to high security sites and fly around 0.5 or higher systems and look for those sites because you would only need to reach a 230 meter source radius and you would only need analysis strength of two on your data and relic analyzer and that's actually really cheap to achieve and it can be done on pretty much any ship that has three mid slots. Considering scanning becomes available to you at uh, tech level 7, there are a lot of ships available that have three mid slots at that point. You could fly some of the smaller frigates or destroyers, or you could go for something like, say, a Bellicose or Arbitrator, which are tech level 6 cruisers that have three mid slots. As long as the ship has three mid slots, you can get all the gear you need and just fly around high sec and try scanning these down. If you want to go into, not, uh, into low security systems, you would need to reduce your scan radius down to 120, and you would need to have analysis strength of three in order to open everything. And considering that all of the regional sites or the decayed sites for relic sites, all of the low sec sites have difficulty three boxes. If you are going into low sec, I do strongly recommend that you have analysis strength of three. So how can you actually achieve analysis strength of three or these different scan radiuses? Well, let's have a look. So we've already talked about how the relic analyzers and the simulators, the scanners themselves, have these basic points. Like, for example, the Explorer Wide Range Wave Resonance Simulator. If you were fitting this without any other bonuses, it would be a 230 minimum scan radius, which is already enough to hit every single high sec system. However, Obviously you want to get this lower and there are numerous ways of doing this. First and foremost are skills. So if we come into our ship tree and we go into natural science here on the right hand side and then to exploration. The most important skill when it comes to opening the, uh, so to finding the sites is going to be space exploration technology. If we tap into this, you'll see that leveling space exploration technology increases the maximum signal load, which is to do with the mini game of actually scanning the sites down. More on that in the wide resonance scanning video. Um, a resonance simulator minimum scan radius decrease of 25%. So that 230 meters is already going to be reduced by 25% from learning this skill. And we don't need to worry about the narrow resonance simulator one for this. 
If we then move into advanced space exploration technology, you can see that this is going to increase that system load, signal load even further, and reduce the minimum scan radius further, another 20% on there. And at Expert 5, that's another 15% reduction across the board there. Now, what this ultimately means is, if you want to go into null sec and start sc uh, scanning down every single site, that fifth point in Exploration 5 can be really useful. Because, for example, the Astero that I'm using currently, with the Astero with an Explorer Meta Level 8 Wide Resonance Scanner, and with Expert Space Exploration Technology fully trained up at 5, I have enough scan res uh, radius, a low enough scan radius, to find every single site in the game without any other additionals to it. It does depend, obviously, on which ship you're going to use, which then brings me to the second point, which we'll cover in just a moment. However, there is also the hacking skill. Now, the hacking skill is useful, for sure. It's going to help you actually open the boxes. You'll notice here that basic hacking gives us a 100% increase to both the data analyzer and relic analyzer success rate. The analyzers are actually a fairly low chance to start with. By fitting them to a ship and then having the hacking bonuses here from the skill, you will increase the chances of opening boxes. And that's literally all the advanced and expert do as well. You're actually looking at a total of almost a 200% increase with all of those skills there trained. You can see I'm currently working on the final one there, which will take me to the full 200% increase chance there, which is about 30% with full meta level 8 analyzers. 30% chance every time you roll the dice, basically. It is still possible, even at full Expert 5 hacking, and with the best analyzers in the game, that you just fail to open boxes. So that is something you'll need to bear in mind. Let's now take a look at the ships. So for this we need to go into the ship tree, and there are numerous different options that you can use for scanning. Now if we stick first of all to the main empires, there are some ships that do have scanning bonuses. The first of these are found down at Tech Level 5, which are the Covert Ops Frigates. These get here a bonus to the uh, simulator minimum scan radius, so if you were to fit a Wide Resonance Scanner to a Probe Covert Ops or a Heron Covert Ops, a Magnate Covert Ops or an Imacus Covert Ops, you do get that bonus there to your minimum scan radius, which is going to pull it down that little bit further. The problem with these ships is they only have two mid slots, which means you can put the Wide Resonance Scanner on and then your choice of data or relic analyzer. And it really sucks to have a relic analyzer fitted and then scan down a data site, at which point you need to dock up and swap your analyzers and hope that no one else has found it in the meantime. This is not a great start, if I'm being completely honest. If you already are achieving the minimum scan radiuses that you're already wanting, um, or you are happy to rig for it, which we'll talk about in just a second, then a better option might be coming across at tech level 6 to something like the Bellicose or the Arbitrator, or at tech level 7, the Bellicose Covert Ops, or the Arbitrator Covert Ops, Celestis Covert Ops, or even Blackbird Covert Ops. These have the three mid slots required to fit a Wide Resonance Scanner, a Relic Analyzer, and a Data Analyzer. They can also fit Covert Ops cloaking devices, which does really help if you do want to go out into Nullsec. Now, there are no bonuses directly to the scanners here, so you will need to accommodate for that elsewhere, but these can be a good option if you're a Tech Level 7 pilot looking to get started. Again, that's the Bellicose Covert Ops, the Arbitrator Covert Ops for Amar, the Celestis Covert Ops for the Galente Federation, and for Kaldari players who like those ships, it would be the Blackbird Covert Ops. Once you hit tech level 8, however, another option becomes available to you that's nice and cheap and fast moving, and this is the Interceptors. The Slasher Interceptor for the Minmatar, the H1 Interceptor for the Galente, the Executioner Interceptor for the Amar, and the Condor Interceptor for the Kaldari State. Now again, these do not have any direct bonuses to scanning, so you will have to accommodate for that, which we'll talk about later. What makes these useful though is that they are small, they are fast moving, they have the three necessary mid slots, and because they are immune to uh, the warp disrupt fields into diction spheres, they can actually roam through Nullsec quite comfortably and not worry too much about being caught. Once you hit tech level 10, of course you can also upgrade to the tech 2 version of this, the Slasher 2 Interceptor, Atron 2 Interceptor, Condor 2 Interceptor, or Executioner 2 Interceptor. Again, three mid slots as required, you've still got that disruption field immunity level, no other bonuses to scanning though, so you will have to accommodate for that. If you are interested more in a ship that does have scanning bonuses however, then there are options for that too. 
Up at tech level 10, we have the Probe Explorer, or the Heron Explorer, the Magnate Explorer, and the Imacus Explorer. These again have the necessary three mid slots. They can also fit Covert Ops cloaking devices, which really helps with Nullsec, and they get some really nice bonuses. First of all, if we go right the way down, they get that minimum scan radius decrease. 25% decrease to minimum scan radius means that you can actually almost hit every single site if you have Expert Space Exploration Technology 5. You do have to rig a little bit to get the very smallest sites, but it will just about be enough otherwise with just one rig. In addition to this, you also get bonuses to your analyzers. These four explorer frigates have a 25% increase to analyzer, analyzer success rate. So your relic and data analyzers get a 25% increase to their success rate, which is really, really useful. It helps to open those boxes that otherwise, you know, you might just be rolling the dice a little bit too low and having those boxes blow up on you. Finally, they have an analyzer analysis strength of plus one. This means if you only want to be flying in low sec, for example, you can now get away with using a, a, an analysis strength of two because the Explorer hull will give you that additional third point of analysis strength. So a strength two analyzer becomes a strength three analyzer. And it means if you want to go to most of the null sec sites, but not all of them, then you can also go to a strength of three analyzer and the Explorer hull will will buff it up to a four, which gives you access to almost every single site in the game, every single box. Now, these are brilliant options. Excellent, but obviously all the way up at tech level 10. One of the big advantages of them as well is their cargo hold. Before the introduction of the various different secret trafficking containers, I didn't think cargo hold was particularly important for explorers, but I have come to learn that actually if you're going on lengthy exploration runs, which can be a good idea, exploration is the kind of career that will take you away from your home station. Don't necessarily go with the concept of, I want to fly and then at the end of my Se uh, session, I want to dock up back at my home station. Be a nomad, embrace the nomadic lifestyle, fly and explore, dock up at a random station, and then continue next time you play out from that and explore and so on and so forth. Ultimately, having a large cargo hold does actually really help with that because it means you're carrying a lot more stuff and you don't have to dock up and return and stock wherever you're stocking or sell it at Cheetah or whatever you wanted to sell it kind of thing. You can carry more stuff and go out for longer runs, which is genuinely useful. Now, of course, if you like that analysis strength and the, uh, the anal analyzer success rate bonuses as well, along with scanning bonuses, whilst you're not necessarily tech level 10, there is an alternative option for you then as well. This requires us to come out and into the Sisters of Eve tech tree, where here we have the Stratios, which gets these bonuses as well. It's a very expensive cruiser, does have some good combat potential as well, which is worth noting, and I do have a video on the Stratios and how that can be a very cool one, but if you're getting into exploration and want to sort of have something a bit faster moving, you have my personal favourite, the Astero. Now the Astero, like the Explorer frigates, has the ability to fit Covert Ops cloaking devices. It also has a complete reduction to the lock delay, which means when you drop the Covert Ops cloaking device, you can instantly lock onto the boxes that you want to be opening, there's no delay there. We then also have that an analyzer success rate, 25% increase, and a plus one analyzer analysis strength, just like the Explorer frigates, which means if you're trying to achieve a particular analysis strength, you can do so using lower meta level analyzers. Plus, obviously, they're going to be more successful. As we go further down, you'll notice as well, they have the minimum scan radius reduction like the Explorer frigates, but this time it is a 7.5% reduction. Rather than 25% at full training for the Explorer frigates, it is a 37.5% reduction for the Estero, which means without any form of rigging, you can use um, the Estero, have all your skills up at 5, and hit that 73.3 meter scan radius. That is the only way you can do this. The Estero is the only ship that can get that low without rigs. It is an expensive hull, and that is worth bearing in mind. This is more expensive than any of the other Explorer frigates by quite a margin. The Explorer frigates will sell for about 350 million, whereas the Estero, you're looking closer to the billion mark for how to fly one of these. 
It's also worth noting if we go down that the cargo hold on the Estero is only 420 cubic meters. Again, before the secret trafficking containers were added to the game, I didn't have too much of a trouble with this. This would last me a decent span of time. Now I'm finding that that will fill up in one or two sessions and I do have to return and sell or drop my supplies off somewhere a lot more frequently, which is worth noting. However, I suppose you could go point out the fact that the Estero doesn't necessarily need scanning rigs, therefore you could free up rig slots for cargo rigs there as well instead, but it does depend on what you want to achieve. Now on that subject, we've hinted at the rigs a few times, so let's now jump into the market and actually take a look at the different scanning rigs so we understand how you can reduce your minimum scan radius using those as well. If you're using a ship, for example, that doesn't necessarily have scanning bonuses whilst you're training up the skills. Now to find this, we come into the market and we go to engineer rigs, we then go down to electronic rigs, and there are two types here, gravity capacitors and emission scopes, and it is the gravity capacitor that we are looking for here. Now the gravity capacitor upgrade rigs, these give a reduction to your minimum scan radius. 10% for a gravity capacitor 1, I think it's 15% for 12.5% sorry for a minimum scan radius gravity capacitor upgrade 2, and then it's the 15% for the gravity capacitor upgrade 3. Now what's good about these as well is that compared to other Tech 3 rigs, these are actually fairly cheap on the market. You can see here about 3.5 million a piece, which means if you're using something like one of the Covert Ops cruisers or a standard interceptor and you don't therefore have the bonuses to your wide resonance scanner, um, you can actually rig and reduce this instead. And I do recommend using the Sweet Fitting app to check what you can get your minimum scan radius down to. And remember that chart you, does depend on what kind of content you want to achieve. The magic numbers are 230 for high sec, 120 for low sec, and 75 for null sec, or indeed everything. So you can use the gravity capacitor upgrade rigs in order to reduce your minimum scan radius to the level required in order to open most boxes. And that is ultimately going to be your best way of doing that. So then how can you actually fit a ship for scanning? Well, first of all, in this video, we're going to take a look at the Estero. I have covered the Estero elsewhere as well, and I've also done a video on how to use the interceptors for scanning, so I'll link those in the description below as well, um, so you can watch those and get an idea if those are the particular ships that you're keen on flying. Now, basically, it just comes down to one simple thing. If you are in high sec, then you are completely safe and you don't really need to worry about anything. You could literally fly the ship with just the three mid-slot modules. Of course, you need your wide range wave resonance simulator, your wide resonance scanner, you need your data analyzer, and you need your relic analyzer. Those are the most important parts of any exploration setup. You need those three modules and you need to get the analysis strength and the minimum scan radius to the point that you want them to be at. Now this means that if you need to get that minimum scan radius lower, for example, here you can see I'm at 73.31, it's as low as it ever needs to be. But if you aren't as low as you want, then you're going to need to come into the rigs and fit those gravity capacitor upgrades. Now, if you don't need the gravity capacitor upgrades because you've already hit the minimum scan radius, then it kind of becomes up to you what you want to do. You might want to fit for cargo holds so you can go for longer runs and not have to pick things up. Or like here, you can see I've gone for three warp core optimizers because I like to go into null sec and low sec with this as well. And I want to know that if someone does lock me down um, accidentally, if I goof up and they do manage to lock onto me, that I can probably still escape. Now for my low slots here on the ship as well, you'll see that I go always for a propulsion mod. A propulsion mod is absolutely vital because it's going to allow you to move quickly to the boxes once you've you know, act, uh, accessed your relic or data site. You can move to the boxes quickly, get in range to analyze them and then get out. For high security, I just go with an, uh, an afterburner. That's more than enough for me. And for the Estero, I do actually like to do some of the Concord Pass combat missions as well. So I'll run to somewhere like Norfolk Icon or Claralam, and I will just run a load of lower tech combat missions in order to get my Concord Pass done. Um, so an afterburner helps me speed tank with that. And that's also why I have a shield booster. Um, I can't fit an armor repairer with this particular fit because of the high slots and the power grid requirements of that. So I just use a shield booster instead. When I move to Nullsec, however, I swap the small shield booster here for 
a uh, either an inertia stabilizer or a warp core stabilizer depending something that's going to stop me getting caught and the afterburner gets swapped for a micro warp drive because i can do the micro warp drive trick if i get caught in a uh, in an interdictor sphere if i jump through a gate and i'm inside a gate camp i can quickly double tap activate the covert ops cloak activate the inertia stabilizer and activate the micro warp drive that gives me a quick burst of speed cloaks me back up and will hopefully get me out of that bubble and off to safely off to safety quickly. But how you choose to fit it does very much depend on the kind of content you want. If you're going to be in high sec and you're not doing combat, then inertial stabilizers are probably going to be a good choice here for you as well, because they're going to just allow you to align and warp that little bit faster. If you're going to, uh, to low sec or anywhere below, I do strongly recommend getting that covert ops cloaking device on if your ship can use it. Just helps you survive a bit. There's nothing worse than being in a system where you've got a load of people you don't know, either greys or reds, you've scanned down down a relic or data site and you're just not sure if there's someone there waiting for you so you warp in cloaked you sort of sniff around have a look and see if it looks safe you can then decloak lock on start analyzing and if someone does then decloak and try to get you for example you have the possibility of escaping using warp core stabilizers or warp core optimizer rigs Anyway, folks, that is just about everything I wanted to talk about in today's Catskull Academy lesson. Hopefully, you now understand everything you need to to get a basic start on the uh, on exploration. We have looked at what relic and data sites are. We've had a look at the basics of understanding how these actually operate. Um, we now know what your target source radius and, and analyzer strength are by using that chart. And you should hopefully understand how to reduce your source radius or increase your analyzer strength using different modules, different skills, ship hulls, or rigs. Hopefully as well you've got a basic understanding of which ship might be best for your purposes and have a basic understanding on how to fit it for use. If you do have any questions, as usual, please ask in the comment section down below or join the Cat Skull Discord. Again, myself and plenty of folks there, very happy to help with any questions you may have at all. And remember, if you're on the Cat Skull Discord or you're commenting in this comment section down below on my videos, every week I give three people a month of Combo Omega each. So by commenting and by joining the Cat Skull Discord, you are in for the chance of being one of those three lucky people every week to win a month of Combo Omega. Anyway, folks, thank you for watching this one right the way through to the end. I hope it's been helpful. Happy sailing and see you in New Eden.